was sitting there dreaming about Tunisian, and I thought, where else can I stick my hook? <laughs> can I stick my hook there? Oh, I can. Let's see what texture will come out. And today we're going to work on a little dishcloth like this that has amazing texture. And it's just because I stuck my hook where I wanted to. And I made it into a fun little repeat pattern, just like so. So let's go down to my studio and I'll show you where to stick it. <laughs> Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back and uh, thanks so much for that silly little intro and here what we have is a nice textured Tunisian cloth and what I wanted to do is that I wanted to have some fun on where to stick my hook like where else can I stick my hook and I thought well let's try some crisscrossing and let's see what I come up with and so this is a repeating of just one row going back and forth and it feels a little fiddly at first but once you get used to it it grows really quite quickly I'm actually surprised and this is the back you'll notice that it's like me dense. So it's a five millimeter size H Tunisian hook. I'm using one that's 10 millimeter or 10 inches long. Um, this here is using lily sugar and cream. Um, you can see how much yarn is left over. I almost couldn't get maybe two of them out of there almost maybe and uh, this is called E crew the color so that you see there. And what I'm going to do is demonstrate this pattern. It's a nice easy repeat and then I'm gonna show you how to uh, start uh, and begin this process. I'm not gonna write out the pattern for you but um, because I don't think you need to because it's really quite a stitch sampler and I think you can get a hold of it pretty quickly and be able to manage. So let's begin. So let's begin by doing a slip knot. Now when you go to do the chain on this the original is chaining of 30. It has to be a multiple of 2 so it can be 32, 28 as long as it's an even number a multiple of 2. So let's just do a quick little multiple. Let's just do 10 because that's all I need to do and so you're just gonna yarn over and pull through and begin to count. So one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So the original is thirty if you wish so you can put me on pause and get your thirty done and meet me back here in a moment. In Tunisian I refer to the Afghan hook as a boat. When I'm going out to sea the ship is moving forward like this and when I'm returning my passengers back as like a cruise ship back to the dock it's a return so it's a return pass. So when the ship is going out it's a forward it's moving forward out to sea and when the ship is returning home it's a return pass. So now that you understand that what we need to do is do a forward pass along the chain and you're gonna go second chain from the hook and you're gonna get the back hump of the chain. For some of you it's kind of difficult especially if your stitches are not consistent. So just have some patience and once you go second chain from the hook you're gonna go into the back hump and you're gonna yarn over and pull through and you're gonna leave it onto your hook. See the throat? See how it's more narrow than the shaft? You wanna make sure that it goes down the shaft to get the right thickness of the stitch is what you're doing. So if you leave it down here it will not be the same diameter as it would be here. So I'll go nice and slow for you. So once you do the first back hump the chain will stay turned upside down and so the next one here it looks like the serpent's uh, back like uh, like Loch Ness Monster and so you're just gonna go into the, the back and going in yarning over pulling it through and when you pull through move down the shaft just enough so it's beyond the throat. And I want you to collect all the way down. So while we're doing that slowly the amount of chains that you started with will be the same number of loops that will be left on the hook by the time you get all the way to the other side. And now I'm in the very last one. So I told you I counted. I should have 10. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
as long as it's an even number this pattern will work. And let's begin to do our return paths and this is really important. To take the ship back to dock what we have to do in crochet normally what we would do is chain a certain amount and then we just proceed along and we would go forward with that after we, we built it up. In Tunisian the build up is done in the return when we take the boat back to dock. So the, the building up is actually done here not on this side. So to do that you're gonna yarn over and you're only gonna pull through one loop. That's considered a chain one to go up and start your next row. And see the chain one here? That is your builder. So now you're going to yarn over and pull through twos all the way back to take your boat back to the dock and drop off your passengers. So you're gonna go in sets of two. And you're gonna notice something is wrong with your project which is actually technically right but it feels wrong in every level and I'll show you that. So put me on pause now and I'll explain what that is. For those that are ready to continue when you look at it you can see holes through it, right? It's in the forward pass that the holes get filled in. So it looks like a picket fence. It looks like you can see your neighbor cause you can. So it's not, it's not until the forward pass where the boat is moving back out to sea where the top section here will fall into the hole and therefore make your fence permanent and be completely blocking your neighbor. In this particular stitch it is a crisscross with a, a Tunisian simple stitch and a, an extended Tunisian simple stitch. And it sounds like it's really confusing but it's really quite easy. So let me just take a breath and I'll be right back. So I just had a stretch for a bit. I, I was sitting doing all these dish cloths yesterday during a storm. So okay so what we have, so I just had to do that. So we have two stitches that you see. The first one here, this edge, do just ignore it. You're not doing anything with that. The, always the first stitch out is the second vertical that you see which is right here. So see, you get it? So this is a crisscross stitch using two different stitches. So you're going to skip the first vertical that you see here. So ignore this edge. So skip this one and you're going to Tunisian simple stitch into this. To do that you're going to just put the hook in behind the vertical just going straight across and you're going to yarn over the hook and pull through. And that was, that's a Tunisian simple stitch. Move it down the shaft. The vertical that you skipped is where you're going to do a Tunisian, uh, sorry, an extended Tunisian simple stitch. To do the extended version you're going to wrap the hook first. It feels very much like double crochet. So you're gonna wrap the hook first then going in to that vertical that you skipped. Noticing the direction that I'm coming from. I'm going in a forward pass to get behind that vertical. When you get more work onto your pa your hook like longer it's a lot easier to do this. So you're going to yarn over and pull through just that vertical and then you'll see what appears. This is the last simple stitch that you put in. These are left over from that yarn over, that yarning over we did. So we have to yarn over and pull through those two loops and that finishes that stitch to return you back. So we technically should only have three loops now because we have the first one and then the two that we had there should only be two. And it will create a bubbling up effect here. You're going to skip the next one and go to the next one after that and do a Tunisian simple stitch. And now you're going to do an extended Tunisian simple stitch using the one you skipped. It's right there. So wrap the hook and go back and pick that up. And you're gonna yarn over it and pull through that vertical that you did. And then you yarn over it and just pull through these two right here. Do you see these little bumps that's happening? That's what you want. So you skip the next one, go to the one after that, Tunisian simple stitch, and then come into the one you skipped and do an extended Tunisian simple stitch. Pull through and just pull through two loops only. Okay. 
it feels fiddly at first. I will agree with that. But it, it actually grows faster than I realized it, than I thought it actually would. And you're gonna go right to the end using the same back and forth that you had of just, I uh, sorry, the, uh, of just these crisscrosses. And you'll end up at the very end. At the very end, you wanna turn it and you wanna get that chain that we started with. So when you do that, it has to have two strands that are part of it. Do you see that? If you just grab one, you're gonna end up with a hole in the side of your edge. But if you go into both like you see, you're gonna yarn over, pull through and therefore it's gonna be complete. So the very first one and the very last one is gonna be on its own for edging and then everything else in between is gonna be crisscrossing. So these make up one, two and then everything is in pairs all the way down. And to return the boat home, it's just like you already know it. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the one loop, that's your chain one to build and then you're gonna have a celebration of just yarning over, pulling it through twos all the way back home. You'll end up with holes in the picket fence again and it's gonna be the return or the forward pass that we're gonna be doing next that will fill in those holes. And I'll demonstrate this stitch work again. See that? And now let's do a forward pass and let me just stretch again. So let's begin and we're gonna start. So we're going to skip the first one out, go to this one. So remember, ignore the edge. So you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the second one out. So let's begin the next row. You're going to skip the first vertical here. You're gonna go to the second. Remember just ignore the edge. So go to the second one here and Tunisian simple stitch. And then this vertical here that you skipped, it's going to be an extended Tunisian simple stitch. Yarning over, pulling it through there and then yarn over, pull through just the two loops. It can be a bit fiddly but the texture is amazing. Now here's the next two. You see everything is kind of it sets and groups of two now. It becomes easier to see. So you, you script the first one, Tunisian simple in the next and then get that one that you skipped with an extended Tunisian simple stitch. Skip the first one, Tunisian simple stitch in the next and extended in the one that you skipped. See, nice easy repeat. And so these um, texture will literally line up on each other without having to do much thought. See how I missed one of the plies? You wanna make sure that you do grab all the plies. So be a particular fussy about that. So you can say you can ignore it but it becomes obvious if you do ignore it. So you get all the way to the end and so you'll just flip it so that you can see the end and turn it. So you get the two strands from the end, yarning over and pulling it through and then you can return the boat home. To return the boat home, yarn over, pull through one loop only. That's a chain one builder and then pull through two all the way back. And so you can re repeat the last row over and over and over until you're happy and then I'm gonna show you how to bind off or which is to finish off in just a moment. So we have the original here and what I need to do is that I need to bind off using the exact same stitches that I'm playing with. So if I bind off with Tunisian simple stitch which is normally what you would find online, you are going to ruin this project as the project will not look like it's finishing off with the right stitch work that you had. So you started off immediately with doing this work. So if you do any kind of bind off that doesn't match the stitch work, it's gonna be obvious. So I'm gonna demonstrate that and then I'm gonna show you how to really finish it properly. So once you're ready and you have the height that you want, it can be anything that you want. I ended up with a lot of yarn left over at the height that I had and I can probably do almost two. So usually when you look up Tunisian cast off or bind off, you literally go into the next stitch and you literally simple stitch it like that and you finish it. But the problem is is that we've not been doing that on this project. We've been doing crisscrossing. So if you do a bind off like the online people say, which is technically correct, if you have not been playing with that stitch work, it's gonna be very obvious. So how you would bind off on this particular project is that you have to maintain what you already know but you have to do the bind off process in the, on the way. 
To do that you're gonna skip the first one and go to the second and you're going to do the Tunisian simple stitch bind off. So you're just going in and pulling it through. That just uh, binded that off. Then we come back to the one and we do an extended single or uh, extended Tunisian simple stitch. Yarn over and watch what I'm about to do. I'm gonna do something different than the textbooks would tell you. And I'm gonna pull through that vertical and I'm gonna continue to pull through the remaining two loops. And so now the crisscross has been maintain maintained and takes you and it looks like it's part of it, right? So you skip the next one. Tunisian simple stitch the bind off and then come to the one that you skipped and do an extended Tunisian simple stitch. And once you got that continue to pull that through. And what this is doing is taking the texture right to the end. And when you're ready you're gonna get all the way to the other side which I'm about to do and on the very out, out last piece you go into the side like it's that normal chain one and you come through and you fasten off. So let's uh, just cover how to fasten off. So just trim this yarn long enough that you can put it through a tapestry needle. This will be a usable project, project so you want to be able to do that and therefore the front edge and the last edge looks very similar to each other instead of doing something that wasn't meant to be. Using a tapestry needle place it through and you wanna turn the project to the back side. You can clearly tell which is the back side on this thing. Just the way that it looks. And so once it's on the back you're going to drag it through and stay on the back side and make sure that you split fibers apart from each other. So just don't go between the plies or uh, sorry between the strands. If you split the fibers itself it's harder to get this out. And when you pull the first time make sure that you don't change the shape. Coming back in the opposite direction and then third time is a charm. Even if you go through the ply of the same strand that you're working with right now of going back and forth that'll be really good. And therefore that's now fastened in and therefore you would have this really cool dishcloth that really is awesome and so any loose ends that you have you wanna do the same thing and this would be how you would do this and it's a really neat concept. Great little stitch sampler to learn to do Tunisian with and I think that you'll be very happy with it in the end. Have yourself a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.